welcome to our Economics Unwrapped series. This video is a part of our project-based learning, or PBL, in Mr. David Smith's class. Today, I will talk about the comparison between Monopoly and PC firm in both short and long run. So, what are we waiting for? Let's go! Part 1. Monopoly versus PC firm. Let's start by defining what a monopoly is. A monopoly is a type of market structure in which a single firm produces and sells a good or service. Wow. In this situation, a single company or group owns nearly all of the market for the product or service. A PC firm, on the other hand, or perfectly competitive firm, is a market structure in which many firms sell an identical product and none of them has market power to influence prices or quantities. If we put monopoly and PC firm on a spectrum, these would be the vast differences between them. According to this market structure spectrum, we can see that there is perfect competition on the left and monopoly on the right. A few examples of perfect competition would be agriculture or internet provider. There are usually many firms and they usually sell undifferentiated product with no barriers to entry or exit and they're usually price takers. For monopoly, we can have a TV cable provider with utilities as an example. They're usually a single firm with unique product with high barriers to entry and exit and they're usually a price setter. Part 2. Monopoly short run and long run. The diagram for monopoly is generally considered to be the same in the short run as well as the long run. Profit maximization occurs where marginal revenue is equal to marginal cost or MR is equal to MC. Therefore, the equilibrium is at QM times PM, which is point M in this diagram. This diagram shows how a monopoly is able to make super normal profits because the price, which is average revenue, is greater than average cost. Usually, supernormal profit attracts new firms to enter the market because we all want money, y'all. But there are barriers to entry in Monopoly, and this enables the Monopoly to keep supernormal profits. Part 3. Monopoly Advantages and Disadvantages To begin with, some of the advantages for Monopoly would be that 1. It is economies of scale, which means there is lower average cost, or AC, from increased output. High profit can be used for research and development, which means there is a dynamic efficiency. However, some of the disadvantages would be that there is a higher price for consumers and there is a less incentive to cut costs since there is less competition. And there are less choice for consumers since they are the only one who is producing their unique good. Let's jump into some real life examples. So an example of a monopoly firm in the short run might be a local TV cable provider. In the short run, the cable company may have exclusive access to cable infrastructure in a particular area, which would give them an advantage and a monopoly position and allow them to charge higher prices than they would be able to in a more competitive market. However, in the long run, the entry of new competitors can change the dynamics of the market. Let's say for the TV cable provider, if a new competitor enters the market and builds their own cable infrastructure, the cable company's monopoly position could be weakened. In the long run, a competitive market may emerge, which would put pressure on the cable company to reduce its prices. Part 4. PC firms in short run and long run. The diagram on the left shows firms in perfect competition, and the diagram on the right shows industry in perfect competition. The market price is set by the supply and demand of the industry, as shown on the diagram on the right. And we know this because we know that perfectly competitive firms do not set their own price. They are the price takers. This sets the market equilibrium price of P1. The individual firms on the left are price takers. Their demand curve is perfectly elastic. A firm maximizes profit at Q1, and that is because marginal cost is intersecting marginal revenue. At this price, firms make normal profits because average revenue is equal to average cost, which is break even. However, there are changes in the perfectly competitive equilibrium. Market demand starts to rise from D1 to D2 due to low prices, and that causes the prices to rise from P1 to P2. Due to the rise in price to P2, profits are now maximized at quantity level 2. A firm's marginal cost curve is effectively its supply curve, and at Q2, or P, Average revenue is greater than average cost, 
and we all know as average revenue is greater than average cost, the firm is now making super normal profit. Hence, in the long run, it goes back to the cycle. How? Because in the long run, as the firm is making super normal profit, it encourages and attracts more firms to enter the market. New firms enter, the supply increases from S1 to S2, Woo! which means the output is increasing, and it increases to a point where price falls to P1, because we know that if output increases, price decreases. With price at P1, profits are maximized at Q1, and normal profits are made once again with average revenue equaling to average cost, which is break even. So, what will happen if there is a fall in demand? Well, the effect would be if there was a fall in market demand, the prices would fall. Now, firms would make a loss and some will go out of the business, causing the supply curve to shift to the left, since we know that there are low barriers of entry. The supply curve will fall until price rises back to a level which gives normal profit again. Part... Five, PC firm advantages and disadvantages. Some of the advantages of a PC firm is that it provides a convenient framework for modeling market activity. No wonder economists love the PC diagram so much. It helps allocate resources to most efficient use. The PC firm encourages efficiency and consumer benefit because consumers are charged a lower price. It is responsive to consumers' wishes. Some of the disadvantages of a PC firm would be that the perfect competition model does not always reflect real-world market conditions. This is why it is so hard to find a real-life example for a PC firm because it is almost impossible to achieve. The model does not account for geographical differences or variations between products since the products are almost not differentiated at all. And the model does not account for how producers benefit from economies of scale. There are always insufficient profits for investment since PC firm is always in break even. There is a lack of product variety and an unequal distribution of goods and income. What can be a real life example of a perfectly competitive firm? Well, an example could be a farmer selling corn. In the short run, the farmer is selling corn in a competitive agricultural market and the farmer is a price taker and cannot influence the market price for corn, but can choose how much to produce based on the market price. Similarly, in the long run, the farmer in the PC market may face increased competition from other farmers who also produce corn. This could lead to lower prices for corn and may force some farmers out of the market if they cannot produce corn at a low enough cost to remain profitable, again, given the low barriers of entry. However, the competitive market will drive innovation and efficiency as the farmers look for ways to reduce their costs and remain profitable in the long run. Okay, I gotta rush for school, but make sure to check my other videos on Monopoly and PC Firm where I describe it in more details and go over how the Monopoly and PC Firm diagrams are made in the first place. Well, that is all. Thank you!